I'm John Batchelor, Mary Kissel, the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal and the host of Opinion Journal each day at WSJ Live. Earlier this week, Mary spoke with Peter Schweitzer, a young author. He is the author of Clinton Cash. This book is rocking the American political conversation, despite the fact that those of us who read books do not have a copy. <laughs> because the book is restricted, I think it will be published soon enough. However, the headlines are everywhere. You've heard in some fashion this has to do with the Clinton Foundation, which has many arms and many different names over the years, especially during the time when Mrs. Clinton was Secretary of State. Mary, your conversation with Mr. Schweitzer is a treat because in four minutes you go through a barrage of suggestions that the Clinton Foundation has over the years given the appearance of quid pro quo. You presented the 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 problem in three pieces. What are they? Mary? Right. Well, I, and I have read the book, John. I was lucky enough to get a, a copy. A privileged, oh, a privileged interviewer, yes. Well, yes. Well, there we are. Yeah. Um, so, there are three groups of people, essentially, about which there are questions. There are the foreign donors to the Clinton Foundation, uh, and that is questionable because the Clinton Foundation promised the State Department and Congress that there would be disclosure, and now we know that they did not disclose the those donations while Hillary was Secretary Memo of State. Memo of Understanding to sign December 2008. Valerie Jarrett signed it for the Obama-Biden transition team with the Clinton Foundation saying that all contributors, while Mrs. Clinton, if she's confirmed Secretary of State, all contributors will be named in, in due time. Correct. And we also know that there were some misstatements to the IRS as well. Right. So I asked Mr. Schweitzer, did Mrs. Clinton lie to the Senate? And he said yes. And I said, can I use that word lied? And he he said yes. So that's one group. We'll set that aside. Then there's the second group, which were the people working at the State Department who were effectively double dipping. They were friends of Mrs. Clinton and they were getting paid a, a State Department salary by the taxpayer, but they were also getting other, a secondary salary from a private source, uh, a consult, in some cases, a consulting firm named Teneo that was also connected to the Clinton family. Now, they were allowed to do this under a special dispensation at the State Department, but that dispensation was the meant for scientists whom the State Department needed at short notice, people like that. Now, Cheryl Mills, the chief of staff, Huma Abedin, the deputy chief of staff, and a couple of others, they, they didn't have special knowledge that justified that arrangement. So that's something that should be investigated. And when you say double dip, they were paid by state. They were paid by us, you and me, John. Right. We're and taxpayers. They, and were they also paid by the Clinton Foundation? And they were, no, they were paid by people who were linked to the Clinton Foundation. And so, Huma Abedin, for example, worked for Teneo. Teneo was run by close advisors of Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. So, we don't know, for, for example, for whom Teneo was lobbying for. Was Teneo lobbying for a government that wanted something from Mrs. Clinton or from the State Department? We don't know. That hasn't been investigated. So, set that bucket aside. Then there was the third uh, questionable activity, which were the fees that were paid to Bill Clinton, the speaking fees, while Hillary was Secretary of State. He earned $48 million in the four years that Hillary was running U.S. diplomacy. Now, that is vastly more than he was paid prior to Hillary ascending to that post. And the question that Peter Schweitzer raises in the book is why certain payments were made to Bill, speaking fees, why he was brought in at certain times and then never brought in again. So, for example, he, he talks about uh, TD Bank, Canadian bank that was a backer of the Keystone Pipeline. Uh, Hillary made a comment about Keystone. Suddenly, TD didn't, didn't book him again. Uh, there, there are several examples of that. So, the, those are the three general areas that are under question. Here's what I can contribute. I, I spoke with Joshua Green of the Bloomberg Politics several times this week, and he focused on the Clinton Justra Sustainable Growth Initiative. This is one of the arms of the Clinton Foundation early on. It's changed its name, but it's associated with a very prominent mining executive in Canada. He lives in Vancouver, British Columbia, Frank Justra, also named in the original memo of understanding right. with the State Department was Carlos Slim right. of Mexico and Lucas London of Toronto. Right. Well, Frank Justra, as you'll recall, was involved in Kazakhstan. He wanted right. to get a m mining concessions uh, out of the dictator there. Well, we, Bill Clinton flew over in Justra's private plane. There was a conversation behind closed doors. Mr. Schweitzer outlines all of this in the book. 
We're not quite sure what was said. Um, but then subsequent to that, Mr. Clinton extolled the wonderful uh, democratic progress in Kazakhstan, which really is a laughing stock. In fact, I think he was reelected. This fellow was reelected. This Nazarbayev week with, what, has been president what, for 90, 500 years. Yeah, for yes, like 97% yes, right, no, no, no. of the vote. It's yes. a joke. His corpse will remain president. Indeed. Yes, yes. He'll be president forever. Right. So Justra, here's my contribution. Justra is the man who runs a foundation uh, based in British Columbia, Vancouver. That has contributors, 1,100, I'm told, by Bloomberg Politics, whom have not been named. Those names have not, rev- they've not come forward yet. The original explanation for Mr. Drister was that there's a Canadian tax law that forbids us to reveal the names yeah, well, of the that's, contributors. That's the Clinton, uh, that is the Clinton Foundation's excuse, too. The acting CEO it, came it, out this week and said it that. It didn't last 24 hours because it turns out there is no Canadian uh, regulation, tax national c- uh, regulation. So Mr. Drister retreated, this is 24 hours old, perhaps he's changed again, that it's a British Columbia regulation that you not reveal your donors. He then said he was in communication with the donors and as soon as they gave him permission he would reveal their name. But again, the, the, the commitment was on behalf of, of the Clinton of course, Foundation of course, of course. to the State Department and to Congress. Uh, so forget what Canadian right. law the is. Memo of understa- the memo of understanding is not ambiguous. Right. Yeah. And There's no gray uh, area here. It, what, what is a joy of all this for what Mary and I do is that when you deal with the Clintons, you deal with endless detail, but you learn right away that the language and the interpretations are all open to debate. You have to prepare your ground accordingly and imagine how, what the fallback positions are. We just gave an example of how they're falling back on the Juster revelations. We can only guess who those 11 name, 1,100 names are. We can also presume that there are mining connections there. But we've already named that Kazakhstan mining connections, there are Chinese mining connections, there are African oh, mining connections. Oh, the Chinese part of the book is interesting, too, because for many of these donors, it is unclear clear who actually gave the money. Mr. Schweitzer has two prominent examples of that, if I recall correctly, one in India, the other in China. One in India, the fellow was giving money based on, an, effectively he was lobbying for business that he wanted in India. And he disclosed that he had paid anywhere between, I believe it was 40 or 100% of his uh, his entire income to the Clinton Foundation, which, of course, was ridiculous. He's not going to give 100% of his income to the Clinton Foundation. And he made a joke, an offhand remark uh, to, I think it was a local publication, where he said, well, somebody else might have paid that money for me. So that's unclear. But the Chinese connections are even more interesting because who, who did really pay the Clinton Foundation was it PLA interests? Was it an interest in Beijing? Was it simply a businessman who um, wanted certain favors, political favors, from from Mr. Clinton? What is what is absolutely crystal clear, John, is that the U.S. government has investigated politicians. For example, former Governor of Virginia. Uh, Senator Menendez in New Jersey for far right, less right. than this. So, who? Where's the investigation? Where? Where's While Mrs. Clinton was Secretary of State, correct. with a memo of understanding in place that the contributors would be named. And this is no small thing. No, she it, was the chief diplomat, chief it's, it's diplomat not, of the we're, United we're, States, we're, cabinet member. This is a big deal. We are not going to come to a summary because it's early days of the investigation. Uh, Mary's video with Mr. Schweitzer is available on WSJ Live as a, a video cast. Mary Kissel, the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal and the host of Opinion Journal at WSJ Live. I'm John Batchelor. Thank you.